we have cascade deck here. Yes. And this is the replacement of... So this kind of fills in, it's similar price to the reference deck with yeah. Digital Director. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of you know the replacement for the reference with Director. Okay. Um, the select has been discontinued. All right. um, this fills in that gap. Uh -huh. But also we have a new deck coming out in the future. Uh -huh. um, but you know, our product is normally priced. Uh, the way we price it is, what does it cost? Yeah. So we went through the whole design process and we built it, mm -hmm. and the price is where it came out. Right. We don't price things based off of you know what do we think we can get. Okay. Um, you know, it was very annoying when we first told a few distributors about it. They said, yes. please double the price. Okay. And we said, no, that's not how we work. So you, you yeah. approached it in an engineering way instead of... We the, are yeah. very strict engineers. <laughs> so logic, logic drives our decisions, exactly. not, not the what do we think we can get. So you're mentality. like a Vulcan in, in Star yes. Trek in a way. <laughs> the most relatable character. <laughs> Performance-wise, uh, how does it fit in? Performance-wise, yeah. it is the best deck we've ever produced. So, so, so it surpasses anything select. we have ever even thought possible. Okay. How did you manage to do that? We sat down and revisited every aspect of our select deck and our reference deck. Okay. And everything in this mm -hmm. is an improved version or completely new from our previous design. Yes. Um, you know, starting here at the bottom in the power supply, uh -huh. It still uses our special low noise transformers, isolated transformers, right. and low noise power supply. But we also added in um, AC filtering. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that we've done a lot of in the past, but the power quality is getting worse around the world yes. every year. Yes. So you know, we literally revisited it, everything. We looked at it, uh -huh. we ran simulations, we built it, and we tested everything. Uh -huh. So power supply is improved over anything we've ever done. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from there on, we went through every chain. To build this, what was your major of objective? Our major objective was really to see what could we improve with the technology that was now available to uh -huh. us. Because the Select is basically a 10-year-old design. Right. But the Select from 10 years ago does not reflect the Select from last year. Right. Um, where we believe in continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. As we improved our manufacturing processes, they were implemented. Yes. Um, but more importantly with the Select, like the Select originally had one power supply. Uh -huh. right. Then two, two became the standard. Right. And then, you know, as we improved the software and the firmware, we just uh -huh. posted it on the website. Yes. So, you know, the Select from 10 years ago, if you did not do the firmware upgrades, uh -huh. it when it compare at all to yeah. the select from last year. Okay. So while the select might be 10 years old, uh -huh. the performance has been improved yeah. so throughout those evolving. 10 years. It's evolving. Yeah. Uh, you know, we came out with the digital director a couple yes. of years ago, right. and that took it to another right. level. Um, this one has digital director over here. Yes. And that's a deck, right? Yes. Deck. So we call it the analog converter, but yeah. it's where the actual deck conversion okay. takes place. What does this do? This is basically the digital part of mm -hmm. the DAC. So um, starting in the top here, yeah. this is where all your input modules, your digital input modules will go. Mm -hmm. So USB, render, coaxial, they all plug into the modules in the back. Right. They use the same modules as our, our previous products. Okay. Um, in here, like the digital director, uh -huh. it has the two powerful DSPs. Yeah. Uh, it actually has two DSPs and two FPGAs right. doing the audio okay. work. Um, it runs off the clock from uh -huh. the analog converter, um, but unlike the digital director, it does more of the digital load uh -huh. because it knows what it's talking to directly, yeah. and it has full hardware control over this box. Mm -hmm. So we actually utilize the DSPs and F FPGAs to their complete limits. Yeah. Um, and it's where you know, the digital processing, the digital filtering takes place. Digital is uh, quite noisy. So. Yeah, it's still rel it's low noise in the terms of digital, yeah. but it's digital, uh -huh. so it's noisy. Yeah. Uh, we use super fast processors in there uh -huh. that produce a lot more noise than okay. what's in the select DAC, mm -hmm. but they also run you know, four times faster. Okay. So, All right. um, you know, and then we also have your user interface and your display. Okay. Um, so it's kind of the brains of the operation. Right. And 
the analog converter is more of you know, the heart. These two are connected with one fiber link. Mm -hmm. uh, we're calling it the cascade link. Link, yeah. It's like our pro ASL right. interface, right. but it's completely redone uh -huh. for a specific communication with okay. the analog converter. Uh -huh. It sends all the data streams completely decoded uh -huh. to address the eight DAC modules directly. In the analog inverter, yeah. the data stream comes in, mm -hmm. and there's one chip in there that just routes it to the DAC modules. Okay. It doesn't do any decoding. It doesn't do any processing. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. anything. It's literally like Transport. hardware. Yeah. It just directs it to right. each module. Okay. Um, it also takes the clock that's in here and yeah. feeds it back to the uh -huh. digital box. Yeah. So it's a synchronous, low noise, mm -hmm. low jitter mm -hmm. link. Then from there, the DAC modules, we still call them the hybrid DAC modules, but yeah. it's the Mark II version. Uh -huh. um, the physical form factor changed slightly, okay. but since we had more processing power, uh -huh. um, we actually can use like more of the DAC. Uh -huh the DAC circuitry. So what is the longevity of the hybrid DAC module? So the, long, the, the hybrid DAC module yes. doesn't know what audio is. Right. It's just a module. Mm -hmm. It's basically a series of switches and resistors type uh -huh. of a thing. Yes. So in theory, there's no format that can come out that will prevent that module from uh -huh. working. Okay. So, um, you know, the it's a similar architecture as what we developed for the select. Uh -huh. We just utilize it differently. So yes. basically, it's like this black box. Uh -huh. And we can configure it to uh -huh. do whatever we want. Okay. So you know, uh -huh. the speed limits are you know, yeah. in the high megahertz, uh -huh. like you know, okay. one, two, three, or four modules. Or in this case, there's eight modules in here. Right. It's basically general purpose. Uh -huh. So the only thing in this that will age yeah. is the digital box. Okay. And that's why it's modular with all the inputs. Because ah. what makes a DAC go obsolete yeah. isn't the digital filtering. Uh -huh. It's not the analog. It's right. not the clock. Right. It's how you connect to it. Uh -huh. But the so, clock also has the age, isn't it? So the clock, yeah. believe it or not, the longer you run them, the better they get. That's so, interesting. It, you know, it becomes stabler, is it? Is that what it is? Um, I don't know exactly what happens in them, but they actually, they don't age poorly. Yes. They improve. Uh -huh. But when I say improve, like, they improve this much. Yeah. They don't degrade, though. Right. Okay. So, you know. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's so that, that's, that's an interesting thing about them. Yeah. Um, you know, being a five-year-old clock does mm -hmm. not make it worse mm -hmm. than a new one. Okay. But, you know, the improvement might be, like, 0.01%. All right. So it's not like, ooh, this one's 10 years old. <laughs> But so, they, they don't get worse. Uh -huh. um, and we also know this because we've been making clocks for years. And right. um, you know, we can actually take our HyperDAC modules made 10 years ago that right. have been running for 10 years. We measure them. Mm -hmm. And there's no variation. Mm -hmm. There's no signs of degrading uh -huh. at all over uh -huh. 10 years of operation. Uh -huh. Reducing the noise floor, uh, what kind of other things did you do? Yeah, so uh, one of the biggest things to reduce the noise floor is separating the digital. Yes. Because um, that had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Even though we isolated the digital from the analog yes. in all of our, in the discrete and the premiere and uh -huh. the reference and select, right. by having them be in the physical same chassis, uh -huh. there's still some coupling. Is that the reason why the performance of this state is superior to others? That is one of the reasons. Uh -huh. um, the other big reason is just how we address the DAC modules. Yes. So, okay. you know, out of a, the DAC module that, you know, looks the same and acts the same, right. we're able to get many times more performance out of it because right. we're actually utilizing the whole thing. Okay. So see, as I said, like the modules were made just to be this generic box. Okay. We used as much of that box as uh -huh. we could in the select. We were literally use, utilizing more of the hardware in it. Okay. So we designed it to have room for improvement. Uh -huh. And so you know, one of the improvements in the select is you know, the firmware would, could utilize more of it. Right. But we've gotten to the point where it couldn't use any more of uh -huh. it due to the physical limitations of the motherboard. Uh -huh. This has no, none of those limitations. Okay.